Merry Christmas to all my creepy fans. Well, you're not creepy, you just like creepy stuff. But since I am creepy creepy, guys, and we have our first special guest, Scream Queen Sadie Katz. All that and more, next. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. And this song is actually what comes up whenever you search Creepy Christmas. And for some reason, I just wanted to bring up my painful childhood nickname of Creepy Creepy. Just, just for you guys. But this is Horror TV Weekly, and of course, I'm your host, Lucretia Lyon. You guys can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet, since there is only one. But of course, I'm never alone. I'm going to start with my lovely co-host to my left. Hey y'all, yep. this is Chauncey K. Robinson, and you can find me on Twitter at Miss Chauncey KR. All right, and today we have our special guest, Sadie Katz, who's a scream queen, and here to talk about her new movie, The Bill Murray Experience. Sadie, introduce yourself and tell everyone where they can find you. Hi, I'm yeah. Sadie Katz, and I'm totally stoked to be here, mm-hmm. especially right before Christmas. Yeah. And I have a new documentary that's not a horror film. Mm, it's okay. Although, although making, it <laughs> yeah. was, making it was a terrifying experience. You want to hear all um, about it. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. a first time horror uh, filmmaker. Uh, but uh, you can find me at Twitter under Sadie underscore Katz, K A T Z, and Instagram at Sadie Katz, S A D I E, K A T Z. Or you could Google me and find me all over. <laughs> and that see more worked. of me. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that here. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so um, I've got the trailer for the Bill Murray experience. And I'd love to play that so everybody can kind of get a good idea of what this is. Because this is a really interesting movie. I like the idea that you had. Okay. Bill Murray's career path is unlike any other act of his generation. It has taken him from the revolutionary comedy of Saturday Night Live to the sadness of Lost in Translation. So what the heck is a Bill Murray experience? I don't know. It takes on a different form every time. I had a simple quest to have a Bill Murray experience. He's magical. I'm starting to wonder what kind of a good idea this is. Bill or Bothead! I think it's another hairbrain idea. <laughs> just a smooth operator. He's like Mike in his younger days. I lost my friends. I lost my boyfriend. I lost my home. This should be easy to drive with, right? I want to feel all to myself. Bill would call me regularly every morning at 3 a.m. and say, please come to my room. It's like I'm going to prom and I forgot to buy a prom dress. Holding Bill Murray in my hand. I actually just peed my pants a little bit. Give me Bill Murray! So why Bill Murray? I like this, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, Bill Murray's not like any other actor. It's sort of like you couldn't really do a movie about chasing Brad Pitt and it mean the same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't think that there's anybody who's kind of like entered our lexicon the same way where he just gets people. When you talk about Bill Murray, it's like there's nobody who says, like, I don't like Bill Murray. No. Like, no. He's, he's also like, he's kind of like Bigfoot. Mm. Most people have a Bill Murray story or they know somebody who's, uh, you know, has met him or they know a crazy story. And he's also very elusive. He there's he's, doesn't have an agent. You meet him by, um, he, he's, he's like a party bragging right. So he's not, he's just not a normal person to meet. And when I first came up with this idea or had it just I came up with the idea stoned and, uh, <laughs> of course it's the Bill Murray experience best idea yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it just honestly wasn't really like a documentary idea it was a idea of like being it was around Christmas I was depressed and my fiance and I broke up and I started to just read these stories of like people meeting Bill Murray and I started to feel like I wonder why haven't I met Bill Murray? It just mm-hmm. kind of yeah. felt like a magical thing. Like, 
I needed something like that. It's like some Santa magic. Claus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like wanting something really cool. I mean, it's kind of like the idea of winning the lottery or something. More than getting the money of the lottery, what would it feel like just for that second to go, oh my God, I, I, I just won the lottery. And that's kind of where, why I wanted that so much. Yeah. It, oh, go ahead. No, I was just yeah. saying from the trailer, it seems that it's not just like, not, not that it's just with Bill Murray, but sort of a, a, a introspective um, look at yourself as well. Yeah. It looks like it's your journey as well in terms of like a coming, I don't want to say of age, but right. sort of like the things you go through in, in this experience. It seems like it was like a very much a labor of love it turned into. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's, when it started, it was like me and my girlfriends, like, wouldn't it be fucking cool to meet Bill Murray? And we'll just be like really stoned and we'll follow Bill Murray. And like it, it started that and then all of a sudden I started to like, lay awake at night and feel really <laughs> as I do feel really moved by it because it just started to feel magical I mean like I still get really choked up when I see the trailer because it just felt and, and the people who get it really get it you go God I wanted that so badly and it just takes on this other thing like any dream takes on something otherworldly. And two, as I say, it's almost like a metaphor of, you know, reaching a goal. And that's something that everybody can relate yeah. to. And as you say, Bill Murray is somebody that everybody knows and everybody yeah. relates to. And we all know he's this elusive guy. And like you said, relating it to the lottery. It's like you feel special because he is so elusive. And only so many people have had these stories. So, yeah, yeah. like, and I like that. And I liked how you had, like, the unicorns and the magic. And, and that is sort of what this journey was, even though this is, a, you know, a real experience, you know, it, appeals to the fantasy fans which are your fans from your other genre stuff so yeah, yeah. a lot of people said well yeah. you do horror films what are you yeah. doing doing a <laughs> <Yeah>. documentary <laughs> about love and, yeah about <laughs> Bill Murray and I said yeah but horror fans are actually really um they say people who like horror are actually people who suffer from anxiety Hello. <laughs> Hi. If you haven't, that's why you have that prescription, that right? right now, yeah. <laughs> that's in my. Yeah. Why do you need this? Uh, um, but you know, it's it's those same kind of people who kind of get what Bill Murray's mm -hmm. about. That mystery so, yeah, that you were that talking mystery. about. That magic. If anything, yeah. with horror, that's the God. mystery of the of the unknown, right? So that I mean, yeah. it kind of seems perfect that you'd go into this, right? Yeah. It's also the cool. It's all the cool people. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we met from. <laughs> Hello. It's the people that you go like, hi, and you're like mm -hmm. opening your heart to in two seconds. So I, I'm sure, you know, I've read some reviews where I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill them, but I won't. <laughs> yes, I will. But <laughs> I do horror films too. But, you know, the other people get it and they see the film and they're like, oh my God, mm -hmm. I, I am you. So, yeah. Was this a different, well, of course it would be a different experience because this is, you know, usually you're in front of the camera and you're in front of the camera on this too, but this is also different roles that you were playing within this as well. Was that uh, more of a grueling experience? Would you, after finishing this, you're like, I want to do it again, something of that nature? Or just like, okay, that was kind of the last time I'm doing like all the roles, all the facets of making this movie and bringing it to life? Um, I really hope that, I really would love to do, I've thought about doing a documentary about, I mean, now I'm going to tell everyone, but <laughs> yeah, about great. truffle hunting. Mm -hmm. Would that oh, be wow. so yeah. fun? Yeah, okay. because that's something that a lot of people actually do, and it's until you really hear these stories about how these people go to these links for these, you know, rare truffles, that would be really interesting. Would that be yeah. fun? So I would love to do it. I really didn't know what I was doing last time, and I think the worst part about this was... I didn't have I didn't know what I was doing the first time around. I didn't pick the right team of people. Mm. I hate to say that, but I didn't and that's part of what the doc's about. Um, mm. and the post was right, thank God for my producers who kicked in at the end, Jim Towns and Dallas King and Jim Griffiths eventually came around to the project and everything. Um, but I think the biggest thing was um, I didn't really, the posts and distribution, <sighs> you're just like, so I think now if I did something, I would really want to have 
some cool ass people. Yeah. There you go. It's some ride or die who already have good experience, who are like, maybe they have some skin in the game. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, rad. I have to make every decision, and believe it or not, I really didn't want to. At a mm. certain point, I was I wanted some creative input. Someone who's like, you know what, Sadie, this would have been really cool too. But I mean, at the end, I did get a project that, as much as I look like a crazy lunatic, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I did meet some really cool people, and I, I can't say who I met. Um, <laughs> spoiler, yeah, <and> spoiler. <laughs> but I mean, it's great. But my heart's still on the line. It just got released, and if you're Distributing with Gravitas, I'll tell you mm-hmm. one thing. You better make sure what tier you're on because they bury the fuck out of your film and they release you, but I'm not supposed to say this, but I will for other filmmakers. They release your film, but they you have to enter the Bill Murray experience mm-hmm. in order for people to find you. So you're mm-hmm. like Yeah, they don't do like, any of their you know job of oh, showing, hey, this came out. Yeah. yeah. No press releases, huh? No one's yeah. gonna tell you that. So you end up doing all the work and they take um you know 27 and a half percent but they i talk them down from 30 so when it comes out you go oh we're releasing on itunes and amazon and this and they they keep talking a good game and then it comes out and you go oh where are we on the scroll and then you go and you go on cable where are we on the cable oh well someone has to type you in how would they know you exist (laughs) Hmm. You dirty dogs. They're Dark not for the, the filmmakers. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, be careful. They're not really on your side. Hmm. But in the same hand, they are not, they don't do your poster. They don't do your trailer. Hmm. You're doing that or you're paying their buddies who are getting possibly, maybe, kickbacks. You're hiring their publicists who possibly, I don't know, are getting kickbacks. Mm. Yeah, I don't think yeah. people realize how hard it is to get films made because yeah. a lot of people here they they have bigger stories of like yeah they spent this much and you know on all into no problems but you know it's independent filmmakers you run into a lot of issues yeah yeah and yeah. Gravitas is mm. the first they're so funny because when you talk to other filmmakers they'll go oh that didn't happen to me hmm. oh really mm. oh it didn't mm. not true um, I think that. A lot of filmmakers don't, they want you to think that their film did really well, just like actors. Yeah, we all. Facebook, everyone's so famous. Put on a face. (laughs) Yeah, everyone's such a big deal. And it would be really nice if people were really honest. Um, You know, they all want you to think they made so much money. And um, it would be such a gift if we all said, well, this is what the deal we really got. To change the system. Yeah, we we'll change If no one it. talks to each other, then how would you know? Gravitas, you're like, wow, you got such a nice distributor. They're really for the indie filmmaker. Well, no, they're not. Mm-hmm. That's a lie. It's That's what they're doing to, that's the package they sell um, because it makes them look really great mm-hmm. so far. But I, I'll eat my words when I get my big fat check. <laughs> Come back on and be like, whoa, well, guys. Thank you. <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer. Don't worry. That's we... been my experience. Yeah. This yeah. is an opinion, you know. But that was really surprising to me to come out and I thought, oh, well, it's a documentary and it's going to be on the scroll. That's so gut-wrenching. Yeah. Your, your jaw is on the ground. So, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to plug before we get into our news bit? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I have a film, I guess, coming out, um, Party Best from Hell, in March. Yeah. uh, With (laughs) with (laughs) other actors, like um, Tara Reid is also in, which is fun, and Devaney Penn, and some new actors that you'll meet, which will be very fun. And then um, Blood Feast eventually will come out. We had the Motion Picture Association really give it to us um, with Caroline Williams oh. and Sophie Monk is in that and awesome. Robert Ressler, and that's by Marcel Walls. And then I'm going to be shooting in January Automation with um, Alyssa Dowling, which is who's also the star of it and who's adorable. Mm-hmm. And um, that should be really fun with a killer robot. 
Oh, oh my god! I'm killing a lot of that right yeah. now. <laughs> Not like a lot of killer robots, but just this whole idea of AI. So that's that, real timely. Yeah. What do you think about that? It's creepy. Yes, I mean Black <laughs> Mirror is essentially all about how technology is killing us, and honestly, the Twilight Zone, in a way, you know, now that it's coming back with Jordan Peele, was a lot of that. So so timely because you know I, it's Catch Twenty Two is we like technology makes us lazier but it could kill us one day oh, yeah. definitely yeah. black mirror like you can't mm. binge black mirror i can watch <laughs> no, one episode and then i'm just like oh. need a break yeah because <laughs> there's a part of me with black mirror that feels like if you binge it does it like because it is all about technology you know coming to get you it's like do, do you start going insane yes. yeah yeah <laughs> well california just released this uh what that official statement that our phones are slow, slowly killing us I know. <laughs> and that no, was like an official that, thing. Yeah. I didn't oh, yeah. click on it because I was like, oh, great. The, the, <laughs> Something and, else. My no. phone's been electrocuting me because my screen's broken. They <laughs> thought yours is too. Yeah, yeah. you're not the only one. Um, a little bit. <laughs> but I, I, I had one where I was literally could only talk to it on speaker because it was so cracked. You know, I'm like, no, just one Releasing radioactive crack. waves yeah. in our body. Well, know. I've been saying about the UFO <laughs> thing. Do you know that they're slowly telling us little bits and pieces? And about a year ago, I was like... Why is all of a sudden like UFOs not a big deal? Yeah, I think I, I yeah. think now we're gonna find out like five years from now. Well, there was a video, right? Video yeah, day, right. Yeah, and they're just like, yep. Yeah, no that's deal. what that is. And I'm like, is it because we have an alien for a president? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. Sure and then they're like, bad. well, at this point, the cat's out of the bag. Well. <laughs> I mean, do, doesn't yeah. it seem like non-news? Yeah, that's Wouldn't exactly. Wouldn't that have been like leading news story five years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or maybe, you know what? All this is just a tie in to, for the X Files coming back January 3rd on Fox. Yeah. <laughs> How oh, yeah. exciting is that? Yeah. I'm shameless excited. plug the uh, X Files after show right here on After Buzz TV, the same channel, the Sci Fi Superhero channels. Be sure to watch our after show at 9 p.m. on January 4th and every week after that for the 10 episodes. Wow, well, that now just that I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is she I love X Files. <laughs> like, where is it? <laughs> Wow, that was really good. Uh, I, I love me. I'm one of my first, top five favorite subjects. <laughs> Just rolls off the tag. Oh, but yeah, speaking of Netflix, um, they're, they've renewed their time travel horror series, Dark. Have yeah. you guys been watching that? Because I hear nothing but good things. Yeah. I um, I read about it recently because mm -hmm. I have some friends who have been talking about it, but it's like the super serious version of Stranger Things. That's mm -hmm. what everyone's calling it. And it's also, I think, is it in Germany? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it takes place in Germany. But. Yeah, I hear nothing but great things about it. So that's good to see. And then Sci-Fi actually renewed Van Helsing as well. So that's mm -hmm. our good news on the TV front. I'm excited about that. Yeah, because I haven't watched it either, but I feel like a lot of people have said much uh, same thing with Winona Earp. These are great female-led series on sci-fi, so, you know, definitely need to go on your binge list. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, on some unfortunate news, though, is Amazon passed on the Glenn Close uh, series Sea Oak, which was one of the pilots I really enjoyed. Um, did you guys watch that? Yeah. I didn't see no. it, but I feel like Glenn Close is like, I would watch anything that's Yeah, exactly. Does. I'm like, Damages. Yeah, yeah. Damages wow. amazing. amazing. <laughs> yeah. They don't know what to do with Glenn Close. I think they, when it's like, because she's not traditionally sexy anymore, I feel like they kind of go, uh, it's, it's risk taking. She's not like, um, what's her name from American Horror Story? Jessica Lange. Uh, Jessica yeah. Lange. Jessica Lange, yeah. Like, she doesn't have that vibe. She doesn't, and she doesn't have, like, a Kathy Bates vibe. But she's her own thing altogether. And I think that's why, you know, it's unfortunate, because with this show, in the show, she was a zombie grandmother, and yeah. who would, you know, yeah. and she was so funny, so it was kind of a good role, And so, uh, but maybe someone else will pick it up, because as I say, it, it seemed like a good idea. Yeah, I think it should definitely yeah. find a home. I mean, I know this is an issue where Amazon is doing some sort of thing where they're they're leaning away from the pilot kind mm -hmm. of yeah. input from the audience and going straight to series and they feel and people are like well how are people supposed to know how great it was going to be if we didn't see the next episode like not giving stuff a chance yeah exactly you know and at least they could have given it maybe a full season for us to see and like to the question of you know what to do with Glenn Close I mean I mean she was Cruella de Vil yeah. you know it's like she can play these evil she can go and that's what she was doing with this character yeah it's like she was playing the sweet woman and then she's a zombie at the end and just you could tell like she plays monster so well yeah they just know? flipped her at the end and i'm like well i wanted to see that part and so maybe because a lot of us are like um and there was a lot of buzz on the show too like why did they not pick that one up well but, maybe yeah. they're 
maybe they're oversaturated with zombies. Yeah, I know that's they true. always say yeah. that, though. Yeah. And then right when you go, we're not doing any more vampires, we're not doing any more zombies, <laughs> no. then it's yeah. a whole other Walking Dead spinoff. Yeah. Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. Wake up to the Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> the Walking Dead just moved in next door. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. That's kind of Santa Clarita yeah. diet. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's a zombie, a zombie comedy. That's why I kind of like Sea Oak, because they were both your zombie comedies in the vein of like Shaun of the Dead sort of thing but eh, whatever I guess maybe we'll see but another show that might be in trouble is The Exorcist this is something I've not watched all of but what I've seen I love but with the Disney buyout of 21st Century Fox the producers don't seem to think that Fox will be invested in the show yeah. So I went to the panel because I actually know the executive producer who just took over, Sean. I'm trying to remember his last name, but I know him personally. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to, at Comic-Con, I went to their panel. Oh, so yeah. I watched a whole episode. Mm -hmm. I've only watched one. And I was like, why don't I watch The Exorcist? And one of the things that I noticed was the show was made really, really well. And it, it looked beautiful. But the actual actors on the stage were so polished mm -hmm. and they weren't very interesting but the fans in the audience of course because it was comic-con were um uh really like rabid fans and really loyal yeah, my mom to loves the show it. yeah but i thought the actors themselves took themselves very seriously and they weren't i couldn't connect with them i didn't mm. really know who they were and interestingly enough they no one was like a mess no yeah. one was super funny. <laughs> yeah. Does that make any sense? Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, there's always that at the panels occasionally, and that makes it fun. Yeah, because that that's so why I went to Supernatural yeah, over any of the other someone panels. Someone has to yeah. be a little messy. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's kind of exactly. like... But no one's like a tabloid person. Yeah. Yeah. And I, not that you need that, but like American Horror Story, you had Emma Roberts. Like, <laughs> Who I love, yeah. Being a mess and she was fighting <laughs> yeah. with her boyfriend. She beat and, his ass. That's so funny. They're back together. <laughs> yeah. and now they're back. So, I mean, there was kind of that. And Sarah Paulson is just sort of. She's interesting. She's fascinating. Yeah. I couldn't help but like watch the panel and I was like. For an hour, they talked afterwards, and I was all they did was talk about the show. They were mm. so snoozy, <laughs> and no one was dating each other. And I know that's not important. <laughs> what's the what's the guy? But they yeah. weren't interesting <laughs> humans. They were just I get it. consummate actors. And I know as an actor, that's bad to say, but they weren't complex. Mm -hmm. They were just doing what they were doing, and so they had just brought on Sean, who I know, and I was like, wow, I think these are real professionals and they're doing something great, but sometimes when you're doing a twisted show mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. you gotta be a little twisted to watch you do something. And I was like, the show kind of made me go, yeah, and that's the thing is I hear nothing but things as I say my mom watches The Exorcist, but there's a reason she likes Lucifer better. Um, and I watch that one is they're fun. I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is John Cho in this movie? In this He's other? in the new season. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I hear, and this is spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. I think they killed him off, and people Ugh. were pissed about that. Yeah, because I love him. They stay killing him yeah. off, like they put him in Sleepy Hollow just to kill him off, and everyone because he's got a fan base, and people yeah. want to see like the whole hashtag, you know, starring John Cho. Like people want him in something, and yeah. he's actually dynamic. To he's a, a great degree. actor. Yeah, and he's and actually he's really cool. Yeah, yeah, to talk to, like you're talking yeah. about. He's someone yeah. who connects to people. And I think with, and one of the things in reading up on this particular news thing, they were saying, you know, we can't seem to find an audience, a big audience. And I'm thinking, well, that's kind of the number one thing. <laughs> you yeah. Can't find it. You need to, it could be the greatest thing in the world, but if no one's watching, it's like, well, you know. and two, what I know about the first season is like Gina Davis was on that playing, you know, an older version of Reagan. And then when they decided to go a different direction with the, you know, I'm like, that brought people who were fans of the movie. And that exactly. was a cool twist. Great actress bringing people to the show. Same thing with John Cho. It's like, why can't they keep these bigger name actors yeah. to bring people in? People yeah. who I like what you're saying, like yeah. this idea of connecting, because we are in a day and age where mm -hmm. it can't be people behind like this curtain where we never interact with them and we just you know with technology now you know people you know them through twitter you know what they think about their inner thoughts and it actually helps you know right. when people can connect to you outside of your work yeah. or within your work because people are like okay i'm invested in this because you seem like someone who can bring something to this as opposed to like you're saying like i i actually didn't watch the extra yeah. and I, i'm looking i'm reading through it and i'm like who are they I'm like who is yeah. oh john cho yeah and then i'm like he died oh 
Yeah. And, like, I guess I won't be watching. Oh. And that's why I say, like, you know, I love, like, you know, certain actors because of who they are. Like, the reason Chris from Malonian is so important to me and I like, you know, watching Happy on Sci-Fi is because he's just such a fun, cool guy and he really interacts with fans on Twitter. I mean, he's reacted to some of my stupid jokes I'll send him or whatever. And you like that guy because he's weird. He's fun. And, you know, John Cho would have served that for them. But yeah. And that's the kind yeah. of show that you actually do want to have someone that's just fun to watch. Yeah. And I only saw the one episode, but it was a special episode. And I was like, everyone's so boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're just boring. They're great actors. Yeah. But they're boring. And that's the yeah. thing about horror. There needs to be a... There's a certain... A fun there, guy. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah a fun, fun guy. there's a funness to it and there's a passion to horror, yeah. too, right? There's a passion to the adrenaline that you get when your heart's pumping, when there's something scary going on, and to be so, you know, posh about it, it's like, are you feeling this? Like, Satan is going yeah. into people's you bodies. Christopher yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh Christopher my God, Christopher yes. Walken can be great. Like, <laughs> yeah. He plays some crazy guy. He has to restrain himself down a little bit. Or like Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, some Someone who relishes in yeah. this yeah. topic, you know? It's like, you gotta yeah. relish in a topic yeah. like that to really, like, I mean, it's it's about Satan and possessed bodies yeah. and stuff. You can't yeah. take that super, like, too seriously. You know, yeah. like Shakespeare and, you know, and even that yeah. was a fun thing. So, yeah. Uh, you know totally get you yeah because even in the exorcist movies some of the stuff like well and i may be wrong as i usually am at laughing at things but there were some things in the exorcist movie that made you laugh right i don't know that 11 year old girl's head got turned around that That was was pretty funny yeah (laughs) right exactly but speaking of things that are actually meant to be funny what we do in the shadows police spinoff uh that's gonna be a tv series actually gets a new title i'm excited for that yeah wellington paranormal i like this it's so funny like, yeah. I love Taika Waititi, so this yeah, will be something awesome. that's fun, yeah. yeah I actually yeah. saw the original uh, short movie based off of the vampires, mm-hmm. and that came yeah. a long way, because that eventually became into, got made into a full movie, and now to know, like, with the spinoff with the, with the police officers, yeah. which is just, it's just such a whole universe in such a small way that they create it for these mm-hmm. characters, and I'm just like, that's awesome. Yeah, because I've only ever seen the full-length feature, but I now want to go back and watch the short film, because I liked him so much, and, you know, what he did with Thor Ragnarok, I'm like, I'm really excited for this show. This will be a new fun horror show to go with Ash vs. Evil Dead or Lucifer or Stand Against Evil. So they're catering to me, which I like. Yeah, yeah. and for you know yeah. those that don't know, like the, the whole premise was these three vampires yes. that basically <laughs> live in a flat together. And it's kind it's of goofy. like real world mockumentary of yeah. their interacting with one another. And yeah, in like one a Christopher the, Guest movie exactly. almost. Yeah. And, in one of, yeah. and in the movie, two officers come and that's, yeah. it's such a hilarious bit that they go through because, the, you know, they're kind of inept, but it's kind of a thing that in that town, I guess, that there's going to be supernatural things all the time. And just to kind of, you know, come up with that idea to go off and talk to the police officers. It, it's going to write itself, I feel like, because there's so many things you can explore. Yeah. With. The cop drama never gets old, for one. No, and that's something easy to do, because that's sort of what Stan Against Evil and even Ash, in a way, because while they're not cops, they're still investigating, you know, kind of some more similar to, like, Supernatural, where, but it's still the same sort of thing. They're investigating these things. You can easily build upon that and make it unique in your own way, as Taika will do. It won't be like Supernatural or Stan, but it'll still be really good, yeah. It's like horror comedy yeah. is now having this huge moment, whereas before everyone was kind of, it, it was so hit or miss, and now all of a sudden there's so much horror comedy that actually works and doesn't feel doesn't feel silly. It feels kind of smart and clever and fun. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing is, you know, it is goofy, but it's, like, done so well. As with when Evil Dead 2 sort of started that whole yeah. process, it was so good to see that it's kind of come back because that's my favorite kind is goofy yeah. yeah I mean then with the horror comedy kind of like what you're what you're saying in the sense that it can be smart like get out yeah was something yes. I was having but it's it was smart. so nuanced in the, what it was making fun of or you know a satire of that it totally worked like it doesn't have to just be oh there's guts but like yeah it doesn't have to yeah. be slapstick there's other ways of making your point comedic yeah. you know it's a dark comedy yeah. in horror which is kind of you know repetitive but it's like a you know well, like just, Happy Death Day was yeah, like that as exactly, well they had the was same a really yeah. great movie I actually really yeah, I, say, I really enjoyed that film. Yeah, I, I was watching it and I kept going, how come this works? Well, because <laughs> yeah. we're, we're actually getting what we want from it, which sometimes I think because of binge-watching shows, maybe we kind of like getting what we want. Mm-hmm. Instead of being yeah. disappointed, like, I know where this is going, we feel smart, like, I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go here. This is fine. 
Yeah, it's a good time at the movies or in yeah. front of your TV when you're finally getting something that, you know, fits everything you want, but is, at the same time is actually good entertainment. Right. Yeah, and as I'll say, that's one thing that we have right now is tons of good entertainment. And this is something I actually picked just for you, Chauncey, because I know you're a big fan of Channel Zero. I am. So, yeah, they, <laughs> they've got their new Butcher's Block promo release, teasing new horrors for 2018. We'll pull up the trailer here. see one just keep walking whatever you do don't go up it every mm. time i see someone pulling teeth that's yeah. one, of, one of the few ah. things that always grosses me out well, I was, trying, Is it safe? I, was it pulling <laughs> was it pulling her teeth or her tongue out yeah i couldn't tell but i was like whatever it is it's like anything with the mouth is just creepy to me I'm mine like, is Ugh. the neck i don't like yeah. when tracheotomy is movies, they always want to go towards the neck and uh, like, see, i think nails because no. i have fake oh, nails like, oh, like, when i break out. a nail oh. i'm like oh. <laughs> Yeah, that looks great. No, yeah, yeah, the first two seasons have been so good. Um, Castle Cove and then um, the No End House. And I just love the premise of this series where they're taking these stories that were on the internet, who knows who started them or ended them or whatever, and they're kind of, you know, this, there's this artistic vibe you get every time you watch it. And it's really just, and it's still creepy. Like, No End yeah. House was very creepy. And um, I'm, I'm excited to see where this one's going because it seems like there's going to be a little bit more blood and gore than the previous two seasons. So, especially if this Are is like you, a butcher. So you're all about the blood and the gore. Not totally. Well, I like, I like cool. mystery and yeah. ghosts, but I also like, it has to be like a balance, I think, for me. See, I love I love the all, the all the movies where they're like, would you rather do this and this? Like the rich guy comes out and he says... I'll give you a million dollars if you chop off her hand or her hand. Mm, yeah. Those are my good. That, that's like my like ultimate. Saw. Like, yeah, yeah. like saw. Yeah. Or, you know, and so, but I I flip around. I go through, I binge different binges. Mm -hmm. It just depends my mood. Yeah, and since um, we've been talking about movies all day, even though this is Horror TV Weekly, we have a special anniversary. Scream is now old enough to drink, and now I feel really old. And it is the 21st anniversary, so I put together some good clips um, that sort of really represented the franchise as a whole. We can show them, and then we can just sort of discuss these. Because, yeah, of course, the iconic opening scene is what you have to talk about first. You know, seeing, you know, Little Drew Barrymore, who you knew from E.T., just get bloody murdered was one of my favorite things as a kid for some reason. <laughs> Please leave me alone. <laughs> Answer the question, I will. Mm -hmm. You're laughing at yeah. that part. <laughs> what door am I at? <laughs> there are two main doors to your house, a front door and, and the thing is, doors. is they've spoofed this scene even in the whole Scream franchise. Yeah. Every movie <laughs> after this in the franchise spoofs this scene. And then, of course, Scary Movie, everything else. So, it, it you know, it's so iconic, it's an homage every time. Well, it's still yeah. scary. Even yeah. you watch it right now, yeah. you're like, oh. No, it's just done so well. And I yeah. think what was also awesome about this is that particularly like you're yeah. saying with Drew Barrymore, no one who watched this movie in the theater the first time it came out thought she was going to die. No. Because it's Drew Barrymore. Yeah. It was kind of like this idea of, no, she's going to survive and then it's going to be some whole flashback or she's going to like, you know, try to figure out who the killer is and then she died. You actually thought she was going to make it and then she died and everyone was like, what? Yeah. Did they just kill Drew Barrymore? And then Nev Campbell comes up like, what? <laughs> yeah, and that was sort of the thing is Drew was obviously the biggest name yeah. attached to this. And they totally and, yeah. her. and that's what I like about the Scream franchise. Just like, um, you know, they kill off these iconic actors sort of like in the beginning or things just sort of getting that blood rush. Like it's re done very well to, you know, get you into the spirit of things. And what I like about this and too, because this is one of my favorite movies, is all of this homage and like, you know, little quick whips and ties to other horror and things like that came from Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Kevin Williamson was inspired by that because they sort of started it. I mean, they're the ones with Jason slashing, James Bond style. So I, I love that. And that's why it's so cool that, you know, she screws up and says it's Jason, not Pamela Voorhees, who's the killer in Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. that is something anybody would say, not thinking yeah. about it. But you know what? If you're going to die, maybe you should take a beat. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, hold on, hold on, let me check IMDb. Now, this was before cell phones, but... And 
Yeah. And it still is funny. I mean, it's yeah. still quirky yeah. and funny, but it's, it's scary. I I was terrified when I watched this. Just, ugh. But I'm a chicken, yeah. so. <laughs> See, I never get, I always laugh, and that's why I like Scream, because I'm like, this is so, like, cool and gory and so you funny. weren't scared when you saw this no oh, I, I was a weird kid though i was a lot i mean I, i'd seen friday the 13th part six before this had come out so yeah my little brother performed the theme song in our first grade talent show are you <laughs> kidding what did he play he did uh the the uh alice cooper song he's back he sang that <laughs> hmm. he was a cute little kid <laughs> I think for me, I was more into supernatural stuff. Yeah. That's what really creeped me out a lot of times. So seeing a slasher thing, I think growing up in the inner city, I was like, well, there's certain things you're supposed to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, to save yourself. But then, I mean, it was just, it was there was a certain, like you said, the way they filmed this. It's yeah. Like, it was like jump cuts, like whether or not they build the suspense really well. And I think maybe that also had to do with the fact that Wes Craven was involved in this and everything. So it was yeah. like, he, he, I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my favorite franchises. So I'm like, there's elements of this fear that's in it. That's not just a regular slasher film. And that's what Wes always does so well. That's why Nightmare on Elm Street is so scary because even though that seems that is sort of a supernatural element, but we all sleep, so we all still have that fear of like a Freddy Krueger or somebody killing us in our dreams. Same thing with here, as you said, the slasher is something that can happen. Like it's not like you that's know. That's why I'm yeah. like, what are you guys talking yeah. about? This is <laughs> fucking scary <I> shit. <laughs> like in the Scream Two, I watched in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And I vomited. Mm, my That's God. my favorite one. <laughs> She's like, what the hell is wrong with you? That's why I like acting. I didn't it's like set out to do, I didn't set out to do horror films on, on purpose. I went to audition for one and I started crying yeah. and, and freaking you out showed so the real bad. Fear. They went, <laughs> How'd you do that? They said, You're chasing me. Like I'm really yeah. scared here. I'm terrified. I, if you said you're gonna tickle me right now, I'd freak out. This is uh, how is it twenty one though? Like I know. That doesn't yeah. make when you when yeah. you send this to me, I went, What? What? Like, yeah. Stop that right now. That that means I've been drinking for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. No wonder I'm so good at it. I know, and I'm like, Oh, oh. my god, this scene, yeah. you guys, that didn't scare you? Come on. I was a weird kid, but um yeah, I mean, it no. was a meta. It was no. it was total meta in the sense of like like us being kind of desensitized to movies like this up to I think this movie because it actually instilled the fear back into it. Yeah, and too because they bring up all of that, and then this is why I put like Randy's clip of you know Randy talking about how to survive a horror movie because this is something you know this is them acknowledging that these horror movies exist. And that is, as oh, you say, the meta thing. Yeah. But then now we are scared again because that could be us. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's listen to Randy's rules. Probably one of the more iconic like scream scenes, other than that one. Why don't they have cell phones? <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is 96, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was 96, so it was, uh... Watch this shit over and over. Shh. I want to see Jamie Lee's breast. When do we see Jamie Lee's breast? I love Matthew Lillard. Not until Trading Places in 83. Jamie Lee was always the virgin in horror movies. Never showed her tits until she went legit. Could afford a decent pair. What'd you see? That's why she always outsmarted the killer in the big chase. Only virgins can do that. Don't you know the rules? What rules? You don't... I loved Randy. He got killed off in three, right? Sex. Two. Yeah. Sex equals death. Okay, number two. In all harm. Never drink yeah. Yeah. or do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why this scene was so great. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, everyone's like, and woo! Two. And throwing popcorn and stuff. Never, under any circumstances, yeah. say, I'll be right back. Because mm -hmm. you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be, be right, right back. back. <laughs> <laughs> see, you push the laws and you end up dead. Okay, I'll see you in the kitchen when you're 
But, um, yeah, and that's the thing. And then Randy again goes over the rules for sequels, which I love. And that's where I made the second clip. But in, who was my favorite was still always Deputy Dewey. I will admit, yeah. I had the biggest crush on him. I even named my little hamster what? after Dewey. <laughs> I was a weird kid. I love you. Yeah. Well, I remember we talked about this before. Your mom. Yeah. Your mom's the the horror fan. My, yeah, both of my parents really like horror, and the, yeah, that's why I'm named after a serial killer. So yes. <laughs> I have a neighbor yeah. across the way, and her her mom was sat in Lindsay. Her mom Lindsay. They forced me to watch horror films. They'll, they'll say they didn't force me. They forced me <laughs> because I would go over there, and they'd be like, "Well, you're spending the night," and we'd go to like the little video place in the <laughs> corner, and they'd come back and bring back horror films. And I was like, "No, I can't. My mom, I have <laughs> nightmares. They make me watch horror films, and now, you know, you're in them. Yeah, <laughs> I write them. I'm in them. Um, so thank God. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is something you'll know because you've been in a lot of sequels. Randy then goes over the rules for the sequels and my favorite scream, which is two, because you know, spoiler alert: Timothy Oliphant is the killer. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. Count is always bigger. Yeah. Number two, death scenes are always much more elaborate. More blood, more gore, carnage, candy. Your core audience just expects. <laughs> Number three, if you want your sequel to become a franchise, never, ever... How do we find the killer, Randy? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Oh, let's look at the suspects. He's so There's cute, Derek, David the obvious Burkhead. <laughs> Hello, Billy Loomis. The guy's pre-madness pity me service wound conveniently missed every major vein and artery. So you think it's Derek? Not so fast. Let's assume mm-hmm. the killer, or Urs, has a half a brain. He's not a nickname. And I know I kind of notice he's wearing, like, he the Dougie jacket around. from, like, Twin right? Peaks, which is funny. So and I have my little lunch pin I forgot forgotten. to mention. There's Mickey, the freaky Tarantino film student. <laughs> yes, and he was right. <laughs> so am I. So let's move on. <laughs> and that's what I love. He's like, mm. He's like, no, it wasn't me. Yeah, and um, I thought it was also yeah. cool that they were talking about yeah. sequel because the sequel is also can be like the death knell, like yeah. the death yeah. knell for a lot of franchises. And people thought that was actually case considering that Wes Craven, Craven was involved in this project for Nightmare on Elm Street because the sequel was not very good. Yeah, two wasn't before great. Nightmare on Elm Street. And yeah. then they then they were like, you know what, Dream Warriors because that Which was is way better. Like the best yeah. of the franchise. Oh yeah. So it's it's sort of like they kind of didn't do the rules of Randy's rules for Nightmare on Elm Street, but of course came out some years before, so he learned his lesson. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's what I feel like what, that was put in there because mm-hmm. he learned his lesson. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you got to talk about sequels because you can really mess up a franchise with a crack. I yeah. feel like they just loved it. I mean, don't you think some of it had to do with, I'm getting all girly now, but mm-hmm. don't you think it had a little bit to do with Courtney Cox and David Arquette? Like, they fell in love during the That movie. chemistry, They were yeah. adorable, yeah. They, they, like, you can see the cast, like, actually loved what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Like, Scream mm-hmm. was... What was the big, huge hit before? Like, what was the horror film that was a big hit before that? It revitalized the it horror franchise. Did. And actually, that's why I'm, I'm going to put these a little bit of a, out of order since, you know, I know what you did last summer kind of came out just right, right after this. But, yeah, this is why, you know, Sarah Michelle Gellar did Cream, Scream 2 and my Buffy Bites the Dust clip. I want to show that one now because this was actually one of my favorites because it was when she was just starting out with Buffy and I know what you did last summer and she's kind of a little scream queen in herself. Yeah. Yeah. But sure. yeah. Which one is it? The um, Buffy Bites the Dust one with Sarah Michelle Gellar. That one? Yeah. Like, um, this, this threw me off because I was yeah. a big Buffy fan. Oh, and yeah. And when she died, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's Buffy. But my Back Buffy off. doesn't die. It, as much as I loved her, when every time she said Omega Beta Zeta, like, I was like, okay, come on, kill her now. <laughs> She's actually very good at going. Sarah Michelle oh. Gellar is so very good at, like, going to from the badass woman mm-hmm. to, like, because, you know, she was on All My Children. Yeah. She, and she, was, Air, she exactly. was Erica Kane's daughter, exactly. Kendall and Hart. She was, yeah. You know, the vixen. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that. So. drop some knowledge right there. Yeah. I'm a big soap nerd. <laughs> but yeah, I love this because uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar herself said she wanted to die in this. Same thing with I Know What yeah. You Did Last Summer. She's like, I want to be the, <laughs> the dead girl. Because it's the opposite of Buffy. Yeah. It's fun being a yeah. big girl. Get the great yeah. dead scenes and <laughs> the death scenes. She yeah. probably didn't want to shoot that much. She's like, <laughs> just pay me. Bye. Yeah. People remember the death scenes, too. Yeah, that's the thing is, um, you know, you always remember the iconic death scenes. That's why I kind of wanted to pick out some of the cooler deaths, because I think after this, anybody really liked the opening scene with Omar Epps and Jada Pickett-Smith? That's one of my favorites. Like, that one was solid. Great. Yeah. I think, oh, where she gets it in the ear. It, 
Um, yeah, like in the movie theater, the and movie, she's I, like all die. You know, it's a scene that made me throw up. Yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of movie theaters. Oh yeah. Empty bathrooms. Go Buffy. Yeah. I think the one with Jada Pickett Smith, I think yeah. for me in the beginning, I kind of knew she was going to die. So that kind of yeah. was kind of off. Because I'm like, it's Jada Pickett Smith. She's going to die because she's the, one of the bigger names. In the yeah, movie. she's the Drew Barrymore of the movie. <laughs> like, yeah. like, she's going to die. I mean, I'm although a, it was yeah. epic, like right yeah. in front of the movie theater, the screen, everyone was like, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because and I love people are like cheering because they think it's a performance. Yeah, and, and, that, and that was so yeah. great about it because it shows about us being so desensitized to yeah. horror because it's like someone can come out, they're stabbed, they're bloody, mm -hmm. and then they die, and everyone's like, "That was so wonderful." Yeah, they're like, Ooh, that's, whoa. "That's on you guys, you crazy." Yeah, that's girl. Like, what are you, talking <laughs> you people. About? And I'm like, since we're I'm talking about this it. right now, going, yeah. like, "Damn, it's so scary." And we're yeah. just having a conversation about you know. <laughs> I desensitized. I'm sitting here going like, I have to drive home alone now. Yeah. I have to say, Nev Campbell, when I was younger and blonde, I always wanted to be Nev Campbell. Yeah. I thought she was mm. so cool. And I remember I'd like try to do my hair, like mm. tuck it under. Yeah. And I try to dress like her because she just always had like that angsty look to her. Yeah, I loved her. Yeah, I wow liked her. Was, that was one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one. And I watched Party of Five because I, I loved her and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes. So like when they were my scream queens, I was like, yes, please. My son's name is Griffin, and it, um, I don't want to say when he goes, <laughs> he goes, where'd you get my name from? Um, his name's Griffin. Nev Campbell's boyfriend's name. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm a little embarrassed because well, how cheesy is that? But I always thought it was the coolest name and I'd never oh. heard it before. And not that I was a huge Party of Five fan, but I was. It, it was um, a good show. It was, it was such a good show. <laughs> it was like a solid, great show. But Nev Campbell, I thought, was like, just, she was so cool and she was. I don't think Scream would have been Scream if it wasn't for Nev Campbell having that mix of cool girl and vulnerability. Oh, and yeah. she was very she relatable. Was Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah. She was the girl that you actually felt so bad for by, you know, by number three, you were she like. She wasn't fragile, yeah. She wasn't fragile, we're like poor no. me. She never played it like that. Mm -hmm. It was more like, fuck. Leave her alone. Mm. Where Jennifer Love Hewitt got a little bit, you know, that that whole thing of what, what's the famous what thing? What are you for? What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, she never yeah. played it like that. She yeah. still kind of had like tough, cool girl. Yeah, I'll have them um, pull up that scene with Jada Pickett while we're still talking here, because um, I feel like if we talked about it, we kind of have to show it to the audience. But yeah, like Nev Campbell's name actually came up in some Riverdale-related news. Skeet really? Ulrich was asked who he wanted uh, Jughead's mother to be, and he said, well, of course, Nev Campbell. And I honestly feel that they could make that happen. And how cool would that be? Because we haven't seen Nev Campbell in a while, at least you know, me. Yeah. Is I haven't seen yeah. her in yeah. Anything? No. Lately. And too, Molly Ringwald is Archie's mom, so it would kind of go along with like you know bringing in these iconic actresses who've really kind of been out of the spotlight for a while. But that, yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And then Winona Ryder's having her moment. Yeah, finally. with Stranger Things. Yeah. God. And as I say, like again, this shows again they've made an homage to the first one. And as I said, in all of the movies, they still show some version of this scene. And I like that Heather Graham is playing like the Drew Barrymore character, because that'd be kind of what they would do, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Creepy. It is so and it's creepy. one of those things like, yeah. how could she die in a crowded theater? But like we were yeah. saying, people are so like, oh yeah, this is part well, of it. Well, that's why it yeah. threw up. <laughs> You're like, because that's, that's like the, the scariest thing. <laughs> That's the same idea of like why I would never go to Not Scary Farm when people say I'm like no, are you out of your mind? That to me is so scary. I don't even want to think about it. When I was a little kid, it wasn't Knots, but it was like at the T East Texas County Fair um, in my hometown. We went through the haunted house, and my brother and I were little. The guy jumped out to scare us. He, my little brother's maybe five, six years old. He hops up and punches that guy in the face. Well, can know? I please it's come so to cute. your house for like yeah. a family dinner? No. Can I please come He's to a family a dinner? He's kind of now, but... Oh, are you doing that for Christmas? Where are you going to your families for Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> well, like, yeah, and, and we'll probably watch... <laughs> yeah, like, 
Yeah, so my little brother could punch people in the face if they pop out. Yeah, it was so this. cute. I was like, oh, he's defending me. He thinks this guy's gonna get us. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, and I just like to me this is I love this because it's so cheesy. This. Yeah, I love because yeah. it's so Tom cheesy, Charles. like her little like <laughs> falling around, like but, but cheesy in a good way, like because obviously I like cheesy. It's scary in a way because yeah. like you could get yeah. killed in front of all these people, people. and no it's one, no one stopped it. No one yeah. would believe it. That's my yeah. fear yeah. of like screaming for help and people going like, "Oh my god, she's brilliant," and going like, "No, dummy, <laughs> I'm dying." <laughs> That would be me. I, I would just start screaming, I'm dying, you morons. <laughs> now, not to get heavy, but do you think you could do a movie like this now because of all the stuff that's happened in theaters? I, I or would think they pull it. I could see them not choosing not to do that particular scene because of, you know, definitely with the, what happened at The Dark Knight. Yeah. And, um, but. That would just be more of a choice, but I feel like American Horror Story had to make that choice this season to air or not to air a shooting right after, and um, they at least made it available for on demand. So I think that I think somebody could do it as long as it was done tastefully. Yeah. But I feel like don't no. they do movies like this? Still, yeah. In a way, I mean, they don't get as yeah. much attention like Scream did and coming out, yeah. turning the genre back on its head and re rejuvenating it. But they still do like these yeah. kind of horror pictures where people. Yeah. Are, I mean, they do the home invasion ones. They do a lot where they're still kind of basing it on the the evilness of humanity to a certain degree. Yeah, and that's, to me, one of the more scary parts, and that's why I'm like, I'm going to get to something fun again, where Mickey is revealing what he's going to say, and this is, since he's my favorite killer in the Scream franchise, I had to include one. <laughs> Look at her. Perfect. <laughs> Look at him. So sexy. <laughs> I still think her boyfriend from the first one is still, like, oh, so Yeah, I love Skeet already. It was say, yeah. so it was That's just, really and I still he thought he was hot all. while he was talking to her. But I was like, what is going on? Why I'm still attracted to you right yeah. now. You are the killer. <laughs> I would have picked Matthew Lillard. <laughs> <laughs> I would have definitely still dated Stu. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. like this I'm still into you. You should watch General Hospital. <laughs> that happens oh, all yeah, the time. Yeah. My but, yeah. mom does, I know. <laughs> Yeah. She always did that thing with her yeah. hand on her back where she was trying to figure it out on her neck. <laughs> I always feel like Nev Campbell kind of looks similar to Kelly Monaco from General Hospital. They have that same really pretty, like, you know, dark eyes. What's that? I fucking killed Yeah, I love this part. And she gets it back. And even the way she runs away, it's not so suddenly that she's turned into some like yeah, warrior yeah. or whatever. It's like, I'm still like human. She's I'm human. I'm still yeah. trying to get out of here. I still can get caught, but it's like her human mm -hmm. spirit. And I feel like with her, like there's just this great balance yeah. that they, I mean, it's been hard to, I guess, replicate. You never get years. sick of her. It's, it's, yeah. Never yeah. Like you, it's never like you went, oh, I've seen this. Or you, she never really produces an eye roll. You're still yeah. like, like, damn, you're still on her side. It's really It's like you're saying, good. like, yeah. yeah, it's not contrived that you yes. want to feel for her. Because there are so many movies where it's like you can tell they want you to feel. It's like, yeah. oh, she's being picked on. Or, yeah. Oh, this is happening. I'm supposed to, like, like her. And then I always end up liking the best friend more. Because yeah. I'm just like, yeah. I'm not supposed to like her. I think I actually do. She has the better lines. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I liked Gail more, but but only a little bit. That's just because I love Gail. Well, but, happy, yeah, actually, yeah, happy yeah, Death Day it. had yeah. me mm -hmm. back and forth. I yeah. liked yeah. her, and then I didn't. <laughs> She, I couldn't watch a sequel with her. No, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't. I would go like, okay, yeah, it's fine, but you know, we all lined up I to did. watch Nev Campbell. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's why. I mean, there were you know four Scream movies, and since we've been doing two and one uh, so much, I've got a few from three. This one, I will say, almost made me shed a tear because it was uh, Carrie Fisher's cameo in Scream yeah. Three, and she was great. it's such a cute, funny little scene because Scream Three just really brought the camp. Because Jay and Silent Bob even make a cameo in this too, so yeah, watch this. I had forgotten about this moment until I see this. And I love Parker Posey trying to be Gail. Like, it's so brilliant. That's what an actor would do, is follow her around. I'm just taken at the studio. Her name is Maureen Prescott. Back then it was probably Roberts. Hey, are you? No. But you look just like her. I've been hearing it all my life. It's uncanny. I was up for Princess Leia. I was this close. So who gets it? 
The one who sleeps with George Lucas. <laughs> Thing is, she you probably know. picked that line did. herself. Yeah, exactly. So how can I help Carrie? you? She's such a warrior. Yeah. To tell you who yeah. You look like. <laughs> How about some information on Marine And Roberts? seeing these two women who were very inspirational to me in this scene, it was awesome. Really? Well, I love Courtney Cox. Did you work for the president? <laughs> the president of the studio. <laughs> $50? Who are you a reporter for Woodsboro High? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Because Parker Posey is so funny, too. It's worth two grand. Are you going to help Gail Weathers or not? <laughs> and I love she says it like yeah. they're both Gail you know because yeah. she's playing her in the movie. And that's what I loved about this is you had the actors sort of following the real people around and, and stuff. And that's something that we especially can relate to because we live here, but almost everybody could at least see where they were going with that. I, I, yeah. I need to watch this one again. I haven't yeah. seen it in so long. I'm like, that's right. It was really good. And yeah. Funny. yeah. As I say, I hadn't seen Scream 3 in a while, so I'd almost forgotten about this scene. I was like, oh my God, I have to show this. Zombies, space, psycho, creatures from the San Andreas Fault. Mm -hmm. Horror pictures. Back in Milton's heyday. Back, Back in the... what? John Milton, the horror producer. Mm -hmm. Those were his movies. See, it, and it almost was like it, Wes Craven was poking fun at himself, and that's what I really liked there. And since well, the Wes Craven movie, you always find yeah. something different. Suddenly, Freddy Krueger's mother was a nun, and mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and Alice Cooper was his dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and I have one. Uh, the opening scene of Scream Four, I think, is funny, and it just sort of goes along with the track of the opening scenes of the whole franchise, sort of. And this one gets meta, meta, meta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I admit, I did not watch this one. Oh, really? You haven't seen Scream 4. It's underrated. A lot of people give it hate, but Emma Roberts is actually really good in it. She's funny. I dare you to open the door. No. And I don't believe. Don't. Yeah, we got Lucy don't. Hale and Shanae Grimes are, you know, younger Scream Queens now. Lisa, Bailey, Wayne. Lord, I hope they're all charging. You know, Pretty Little Liar and a Degrassi High. <laughs> And I love how layered this opening so is. Okay. And, you know, you'll see later. It's kind of goofy. But they really like? lay on thick with it the recognizable like actresses. Yeah. <laughs> like in through hair. <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. Kind of like the first few. I know, as I say, with Scream 3, who was it that gets killed in the beginning? I'm trying to think of that one, because it, it's a very forgettable scene. It's not like the first two, and I think that's why some people give Scream 3 a lot of hate, but spoiler alert, Scott Foley does a great job being the killer. <gasps> yeah, I, I haven't yeah. seen this either. Oh, really? I'm like, uh. Right here in front of us. Yeah. And see, I love Kristen Bell and um, Anna Paquin because I'm a big True Blood and Veronica Mars fan, so this was great. And it's very un Kristen Bell's, like, you know, newer movies. You see her always being so sweet, and I always forgot. I was like, yeah, she was great, sassy as Veronica Mars. She's great, Veronica Mars. Yeah. And then she gets sassy again here, and you forget what she a good actor. She's sassy a little yeah. bit in the good place. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to catch up on that show. Really good. I have a, a few pre-screeners. <laughs> Could really happen. I can't do it. These sequels don't know when to stop. They just keep recycling the same shit. <laughs> Even the opening scene, there's always some random girl who gets a call that undoubtedly ends up getting her killed. It's all so predictable. There's no element of surprise. You can see everything coming. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <gasps> Did that surprise you? Yeah, Anna the Snow Princess killing Suki. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you talk too much. <laughs> I love this. Now shut the fuck up and watch the movie. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah, and that's the thing, is it's a fun franchise. As I say, even Scream 4 is worth a watch. I And 2 is my favorite. How about you guys? 1 is still my no. favorite. That's still my favorite one. Yeah, it's so iconic. Yeah, I mean, I... I love them. I couldn't watch them alone. I really, <laughs> maybe it's slasher movies legitly scare me. Mm. So I mean, I I'm afraid of cat, but scary movies scare <laughs> me. Um, but I would say, I one one two and three are all sort yeah, of the same. Yeah, they're very good. I mean, they're really good. I don't know if I have a favorite. I think they all stand alone but they work well together i would say that the scream franchise definitely as far as coming out in the last you know now 21 years you know those sort of horror movies definitely the best uh, any dissent in that because i'm like i'm trying to think of other franchises Don't they like hold saw up? And, yeah but they, they hold, hold up, up. Yeah. like you watch them and you go oh that's still really good yeah you had like i know what it did you i know what you did last summer saw there was a few others but yeah as i final say final destination yeah that was oh, one yeah, that that's was fun as the hell the first one is amazing yeah. glenn morgan i've luckily you know had the chance to talk to him a lot about that movie and you know what it was but yeah as i say the sequels as they went on weren't as strong as opposed to like scream right yeah no, yeah, you're right about yeah. that in terms of franchise. Because I know what you li- did last summer actually for a bit topped screen for me. The first really? one, Ryan yeah. Felipe, and all, I, was just, I just loved it. The way it was under Yeah, it was, it was a good movie. about it. And then the sequel happened, and I was like, ah. Yeah, the sequel <laughs> was just like, why did we need that, I think? Yeah. And that was sort of the thing. They're like, hey, we're just going to make more money because Jennifer yeah. Love Hewitt, you know, is you know, a money-making actress right then. And that's the thing about the Scream franchise. Yeah. It has, once we, what we were saying before about this passion, like people yeah. actually enjoying it. Like you saw, like the characters came back, the actors came back, and just every time they were doing a scene, you were just like, oh my gosh, I know this. Even if it's creepy, it's like you felt that they were still giving their all to it. They and, never threw yeah. anything away, yeah. and everything was like magical. And, and then even the second one, it kind of felt culty of like, yeah. like you were learning something new. It, it felt in some ways like there's very few episodes of Buffy yeah. that, that didn't feel like you were in yeah. on the joke. Mm-hmm. And they weren't. they were having a fun time making it, you know? Um, and yeah. I think that's the thing is that really speaks to people and it shows when people are having a good time. And that's what I like to watch. But since, you know, it is sort of uh, throughout the film, I have to do it. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> well, mine's is Nightmare on the Street. Oh, the third yeah, one, cool. though. The first one I loved, but the third one is like my favorite. Dream Warriors is like, my, my favorite. I clean the house to that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I put it on the background, just clean the house, and I look at the scenes. I always say A Nightmare on Elm Street is the one that scared me the most, but my favorite scary movie, I would have to say, I really love Black Swan. Like, really? Like, that, like, that one. It's a terrifying movie. In it's always. terrifying yeah, it is. and done really, really well, and it meant something to me. Yeah. Like, lingered and beautiful. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, and I think for me, um, I would say Evil Dead 2 and Friday the 13th Part 6, just because, like, those are, I just remember so many good memories watching those, my brother, and they're the good, fun ones, but they've also got that element of blood and gore and, like, a great story. Because, yeah, the first Evil Dead is so good, but it is, like, a student film and doesn't include a lot of the slapstick that, you know, more people recognize. So I usually say the second one. But, and yeah. isn't Ash Evil Dead kind of, like, your favorite horror TV? Oh, franchise? yeah, for sure. I, I love yeah. Ash. I love Bruce Campbell. But about, like, Shaun of the Dead is actually... It's a good movie, Maybe yeah. one of oh. the most perfect films ever yeah. because you cry... <laughs> I cry at everything, but it's so you cry, sweet at you end. laugh. <laughs> it's a buddy movie. There's some s- legit jumps. Mm. I mean, I think I think that's pretty. It's a solid movie, but I wouldn't call it my favorite horror film. Yeah, it's not really horror. But um, Exorcist is good, but it's it is like legit. As I say, the original Exorcist is just such a good, like solid, scary film. Yeah. And I really like those films from the seventies, like that, The Exorcist, The Omen. Like those are great to me. But I, those are movies that I don't really watch multiple times as much as say one of the dumber ones that I said. <laughs> like, <let's laughs> now I thought Get Out was really great, yeah. but here was the one thing I wondered. I'm like, in ten years from now, will no, it hold no. up? Yeah. Will it mean something? I think. It, but why it was so good is it said things that needed to be said now, now. and was uncomfortable. I, I went to see it in Manhattan mm-hmm. Beach. Mm-hmm. The audience was like this. We didn't know whether to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, just like, I, God, I, like oh. I was like, 
I was like, are we supposed to laugh? We're kind of like, mm, I don't know. Like, this is really <laughs> fucking <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. That, like, and then when people walked out, like, it just, it was very, yeah. I, I don't know if I were, you know, I was very uncomfortable. But I was like, a decade from now, I don't know. I did, you know, my son's part Mexican and like his friends are very racially integrated and diversified mm -hmm. and they're so open minded and stuff. I don't know if it will have that same kind of impact. And so there's certain horror films or even like it. Yeah. The new it compared to the old it. Yeah. yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm it so good, glad but, it was yeah. good. But I was watching it and I was like, Come on, yeah. guys. The, the that's old my second it the was old it, yeah. the old it's got to be maybe even my first. That's yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah. What about do you guys remember? No one says this, and I keep screaming it from the rooftops. And even when I saw um, the new it, I was like, "Hey guys, what about Storm of the Century?" Mm -hmm. And yeah. everyone, everyone goes, "I don't know what you're talking about." I go, "Give me what you want, and I'll go away." Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. It was so good. good. Legion, yeah. And I I keep thinking, why don't they bring that back? Because that was so good. Yeah, and two, they've, you know, made so many other King Stephen King films multiple times. So yeah, why not that? Well, oh, and it was yeah. so, I loved it. I mean, that yeah. was right after it. Yeah. And they did that. And I remember just like being so excited to see it, but it didn't it just didn't get the same buzz as it, but it was Good. I, I still think that the new it was okay, but the old it, was okay. it yeah. might too be too much comedy for me. Yeah, the old it might be um, one of my tops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I like that because it's a legit scary movie, and I remember being terrified. And um, somebody on my street on Halloween had put like a little you know, hands and a, um, a pen and wise mask uh, in the storm drain. I'm like, Bravo. When you were like, a kid? No, just like this oh. year mm -hmm. on my street here in Hollywood. I'm like, bravo. I like that. You know, scaring the kids yeah. away. But since we have to wrap soon, I will say um, thank you so much yes. for joining us, Sadie. Thank you so much. Be thank sure you. to. What um, a treat. Yeah. I'm so excited for the new horror stuff and the yeah. Bill Murray project. Experience. Exactly. The Bill Murray the Bill experience. Murray experience. Please, please. Um, you know, at least even if you didn't watch it, just mm -hmm. review it. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Say five stars. Say, oh, that was wonderful. I love it. <laughs> and where can they keep up the conversation with you if they want to, you know, find you on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere? Um, yeah, Facebook uh, oh. under Sadie Katz. If I have too many mm -hmm. friends, please find me on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. And uh, Chauncey, where can they keep up the conversation with you? On Twitter, of course, at Miss Chauncey KR. All right, guys, since I'm Lucretia Lyon, you can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet since there is only one. And have a happy holidays to all. A creepy holiday. Yeah, creepy Something. holiday. I like that. Mm. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Have a creepy Christmas. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.